my artists, we're gonna get started on our sailboat painting today. You're gonna first take your paper, have it the wide way or the horizontal way, and then you're gonna fold it down top to bottom so that the corners line up and the edge of that paper lines up. And then you are gonna carefully, as best you can, go ahead and make a nice neat fold across the middle like that. Now while this is still folded, go ahead and write your name as well as your teacher's name. And then you can open it right back up. Now I've got two different color blues that I'm working with here. I'm gonna start out with what looks kind of like a turquoise type blue and dipping my paintbrush in the water several times, getting that paintbrush paint nice and wet, using the tippy tip of that paintbrush and turning that circle. I am gonna go ahead and start to paint one half of my paper with that turquoise color. Now, I already accidentally dripped down on this side, so I might as well just make that my little turquoise side. Now, artists, notice I just painted to that center line or crease in that paper. Now, on the other half of that paper, I'm gonna use what looks like more of my royal blue or true blue or ultramarine blue, however you wanna think of it. Dipping my paintbrush into the water, using the same paintbrush, that's absolutely fine. Lots of water, tippy tip of that paintbrush, and going right ahead. Now one thing I am doing for right now so that the wet paint doesn't run together, I'm leaving a little space in between my painted sides for right now. If you go off of your paper a little bit, that is absolutely fine. We will wipe down the tables when we're done. Now my very last step, I went right up next to that turquoise. And that concludes our first steps. It's sailboat time. It is up to you. You could do one, two, or three sailboats. If you do one sailboat, I would make it a little bit bigger. And then obviously if you're doing two or three, they'll be kind of a smaller size or a medium-ish type size. Now I'm going to be starting off with kind of what looks like a little half circle. Your sailboats do not need to look just like mine. I'm just giving you an example of how you could make them look. But one important thing, I'm only gonna be painting on one half of the paper and my paint is gonna get onto the other half of the paper when I stamp and rub. So this is very important, artists. While this paint is still wet, notice I only painted that little part, I'm gonna fold that paper, and it should be easy to fold along the crease of my paper, and then I'm gonna just press and rub. And I'm not gonna take long because I don't want that paint to start drying while the paper's closed. And I open it back up and voila, there's my little reflection in the water. Now the cool thing is the reflection might not be perfect, and that's okay, because it's supposed to be kind of like it's in the water. All right, so I'm using the tippy tip of that paintbrush and I'm only painting a little bit at a time. And then I fold and press and rub and then open it back up. It's a pretty quick process. I'm gonna stick with my blue for right now and I'm gonna do another sailboat right over here. Now, very important, while that paint is still wet, I need to fold and press and rub and open it back up like that, voila. Now, artists, what if you want to make your sailboats look like they're a little bit lower on the water? Because mine looks like they're kind of floating on top, and that looks a little silly, but I kind of like it. I think it's kind of fun. You could certainly make yours sit a lot lower. And again, you can make yours different shapes than I'm making mine. Now, right here, what should I do? Should I keep on painting? No, I need to go ahead and fold and press and rub because it's very important that I do that while the paint is still wet. If I let it dry, this part doesn't work. So the first thing we're gonna do is to get all of the sailboats kind of painted in or the structures of the sailboats painted in. And then after we do that, we can then start to fill in with some colors. Now you wanna try your best not to mix these colors. So I'm using a different paintbrush for my red, you can see. And then when I paint, I wanna make sure I kind of go inside those blue lines as best as I can. Now, once again, I'm gonna go ahead and fold and press and rub pretty quickly. And voila. I love how that's not a perfect little print or stamping down there. It kind of has some holes in it, just like you would expect naturally to see in the water. Now 
So artists notice I'm just painting a little bit at a time and then folding and pressing and rubbing while that paint is still wet. That's very important. Now artists, if you're using a white or a yellow, some of our really lighter colors, you're gonna wanna kinda do these towards the end. So paint with kind of your more vibrant or darker colors first, and then paint with your yellows or your whites last. I just find that, that helps everything show up the best. Now artists, as far as designs go in there, let me just show you what a little pattern might look like. So notice I'm doing teeny tiny little dots with my blue. You know, you could even use the opposite end of the paintbrush to do some of your little dots if you would like. And I want you to see what happens to these teeny little dots of blue when I fold and press and rub, they get a lot bigger and they kind of look splatted out. What you might want, just know that if you want to do a dot or a stripe pattern or something like that, it's going to kind of expand and blob out. And if you don't mind that, that is absolutely fine. But you probably don't want to do anything like a star because it usually ends up being like an awkward blob. Um, I can't wait to see these guys. Thanks for listening.